This one is all about music publicity 101. What exactly is publicity? And what are the many ways that you can get free exposure for you and your music through the media? That's what's in store for you, so stay tuned. I'm Bob Baker, and this is the Music Marketing Podcast, episode 110. Welcome to the Music Marketing Podcast, where I share marketing and career advice for musicians, singers, songwriters, and music business pros just like you. If you don't already, please subscribe to the audio podcast in iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, or wherever you consume such products. And if you're catching the YouTube version, please, by all means, subscribe to the channel there. So on this one, I'm going to dip into the podcast archives and bring you something from Music Marketing Monday. Now, you may recognize that name depending on how long you've been subscribed to the podcast, but a couple of years ago... There was another sort of version of this podcast called Music Marketing Monday that I co-hosted with my good friend, Billy Grizak. And over the course of like a year and a half, we put out like 60 episodes. And it was a lot of fun because you, as a listener, got to listen to a conversation instead of a solo speaker like I'm doing right now. So recently, I was going back through the archives and I found this one about Music Publicity 101. Admittedly, I do much of the talking in here, but Billy chimes in a lot with some excellent uh, information and advice and personal experience that he has on this topic. I think you'll enjoy this. So let's take a listen and I'll chat with you on the other side. I, uh, I think I might have mentioned last week, probably mentioned it on previous episodes too, that there was a 10-year period of my life where I published a local music newspaper here in St. Louis. And I learned a lot during that full decade of my life. It was actually the, during that period that I made my transition from being strictly a musician you know, to being a writer and a journalist, then to being a published author during that period. And then I put the paper to rest, so to speak, uh, so I could go on and pursue this career that I've been on you know, for 15, close to 20 years since, uh, obviously as an author, teacher, speaker. But I learned a lot, a ton uh, publishing my own paper because you know, I had to make the decisions for what content appeared in that newspaper. And so believe me, over that 10-year period, whether it was face-to-face -face communications with people, uh, phone calls, email, um, you know, press kits showing up in the mail, which is more, which was a lot more common way back when I was doing my newspaper. I mean, I learned a lot about what it was like to be on the receiving end, I guess, of media pitches. And uh, I learned that a lot of people do it the wrong way. They do it in a, a disservice to themselves in the way that they go about it. And then I used what I learned to turn around. And then when I sought out publicity for my own activities, I said, well, I'm going to use these same, I'm not going to make the same mistakes that these people did. So I applied that to my own pursuit of uh, media exposure. And I've been very fortunate to have been, you know, I've been on NPR a couple of times and Vibe Magazine and Music Connection and American Songwriter and, and so on and so forth, Publishers Weekly over in the book world. And so, yeah, I like to think that I have a lot of experience. And the thing is, even though I published a local music newspaper. It was relatively small. Over the years, I've run into journalists of all types, from bloggers who just ran a small blog to people that were um, editors and columnists in national music magazines or whatever. And we all have the same story. I mean, it's amazing, the same war stories that we tell about people approaching us in the wrong way. And so I know that this is consistent. You know, what my experience is not unique because I was at a local level, but it's just human... <laughs> dealing with humans that are seeking exposure. So anyway, and I actually, actually created a uh, an online course called the Music Publicity Insider's Guide that I released. And I'm going to actually kind of go over some highlights from that. So I, are you ready for me to lead this train? And I know you're going to have a lot of things to offer here, Billy. Are you still there? I was going out to get a bite. I'll be back. Yeah. In a <laughs> you can just have a sandwich during this episode. No, uh, actually, before we get going, though, I mean, let's bring it down to, you know, 101 here. Publicity is defined as the notice or attention given to someone or something by the media or the giving out of information about a product, person or company for advertising or promotional 
excuse me, promotional purposes. And finally, the last definition given here by Google, because you can trust Google, material yes, or <laughs> material or information used for publicity. And I gotta tell you, it's it's very broad, and I suspect that this is just gonna be an intro to publicity today, right, Bob? It is. Yeah, we're just going to touch the basics. And in fact, you you are we didn't even like go over notes about what we're going to cover. And you are reading my mind because the very first note here I got is what is publicity? What is it's publicity? Am- it's amazing. So and you're right. It does mean different things to different people. So I would like to clarify what my definition of it and the way I, what, what I'm how, where I'm going to be coming from. For me, it's media exposure. Or it's, or it's basically it's not paid advertising. That would be called advertising. It's not things that you do on your own, the things that you post on social media, things you do on your website, flyers you put up. To me, that's not publicity in the strictest sense because it's just, oh, that's just marketing activities you do on your own. So for me, publicity is when you get a third party that has an existing audience and you basically persuade them or they are feel compelled to cover you and expose you to their audience. So you, do have to go through a gatekeeper to get publicity in the in the, in the sense that I'm speaking of. That's my definition of it. Although some people use the term in a broader sense. So is that cool? It is cool, and I'd like to just say this because this is you know with my group we focus on marketing, right? And a lot of people don't understand that marketing, sales, advertising, publicity, PR, all these different things. These are separate entities that all live in the same, you know, apartment building, so to speak, you know what I mean? But they are different and they have their their own conventions and their own uh, rules and, and their own, you know, things that you need to know. And I'm really glad that we're tackling this. And maybe in the future, we could break down each one of these uh, separate entities that are vital, but maybe not, uh, maybe misunderstood a little bit. You know what I'm saying, Bob? Right. Yeah. I know. That, and a lot of these, these terms are interchangeable, like marketing, public relations. Those are kind of big umbrella terms. Uh, promotion is also sort of a vague, you know, uh, <laughs> sort of umbrella term. A lot of things fall under it. But for me, or the when I speak about publicity, just so we're clear, yeah, I'm talking about and actually, the the next thing is what is media, so we can talk about that. It kind of le- lends itself to go into this. So yeah, I'm talking about that that third party thing. So it's going through media outlets. So traditionally, prior to the internet, and those these things still exist. Um, these are just some of the ways you can break down media. One is print. So that's anything, any type of uh, a news or music uh, related source. That's newspapers. That's magazines. That's fanzines, which have been around a long time. They could be local, like mine was a St. Louis-based publication. They can be regional or related to a state or area. It could be national. They can be international in scope, you know, and so there's the print versions of those. Now, obviously, most of them have, uh, almost all of them have online components to them as well. So that's one aspect. Another one is what you call traditional broadcast. And by broadcast, I'm talking about anything that can be that be sent through the airwaves, although these days it's online and digital too. But that's basically radio and television. And so it's basically – obviously radio is something that someone has set up uh, their own outlet uh, to communicate with people through their ears. With the TV, you've got the visual aspect of it. And that as well can be local. It can be regional. It can be national. It can be international. And so that includes college stations, both radio and TV, local cable, um, you know, local uh, morning shows, local uh, like you know, the major broadcast affiliates. Like we got NBC affiliates and Fox affiliates and all this stuff in St. Louis with their local programming and just a ton more. And so also the other thing I want to clarify is when it comes to publicity, I'm not talking about radio airplay, like getting your songs in rotation. That is a form of promotion. But I'm not talking about that type of radio exposure. So when I'm talking about radio, I'm probably going to be mostly talking about interviews and ways you can get mentioned uh, in in radio other than getting your songs in rotation, at least, again, with my definition of publicity. Are you are you on board with me so far, Mr. Grizak? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My pizza should be here any minute. Just keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we need to like, really rethink what the definition of media was. So again, in the past it was, it was print and it was broadcast for them for the, for the most part, those were your media outlets. And there was a distinction between there were the, they were producers of the media. They were the people that had the money and the connections and the experience or whatever to do their own newspaper, to do, to put on a radio show. 
uh, or a radio station to create a, to, you know, it was out of the reach of the average person. But as we know, <laughs> uh, over the past decade, um, that definition between the producers of content and the consumers of content is a very much a gray area. And now everyone has access to the tools to create their own blog to create their own podcast like we're doing. Anybody could do this. It's, Anybody it's, could do it. Damn, and everybody seems like they are, you know. And uh, and the same thing with the, with YouTube channels and people creating videos. So there's so so the it, the definition of a media outlet is so wide and varied. It's almost like it has it's lost. You know, it's it's hard to wrap your brain around. There's a lot of there's this term citizen journalists that were that came out several years ago again where people took it upon them themselves to write about things that were of interest to them and they have readerships from you know two people to millions you know and everything in between so again when you're seeking publicity the way that I define it it's where you have to approach someone who has created their own platform whether that be text based uh, audio based, video based, whatever it is, and you're approaching them and go, hey, I've got this thing that your audience would really love. And they, again, sometimes they will seek you out. Like a lot of the exposure that I've gotten was somebody was Googling something related to, and they found me related, you know, in a search that they did and approached me. And I made myself available to comment on something or to be interviewed or whatever, uh, which is great position to be in but most people most musicians have to seek that publicity out so you have to approach the people who have the platform and have the audience and sort of give them the benefits the reasons why you're worth covering and, and we can go into that at a later thing but i'm just gonna we're just kind of laying the basics here you know the next thing i guess to list here in, the, in our little music publicity 101 segment here is what kind of coverage can you get through these many media outlets because I think people ha have tunnel vision when it comes to getting publicity. They think about the interview or the album review, and those are certainly cool ways, whether it's a blog or local daily in your paper, I mean, in your in your city. But there are a lot of other other things. So there's CD or album reviews. That's the classic form of publicity for, obviously, a new release. And those are still great to get. Probably not as common, but they're still you still see them in certain publications or blogs or live show reviews and so this is where obviously a reporter or a journalist or a blogger goes out to see a band live in a certain city and writes something up but the publicity comes after the fact as opposed to a preview of a show which most bands want to get exposure prior to their gigs there's something called column blurbs and so like for instance in my old newspaper i used to have this little section that was like you know who's doing what in the studio and it was sort of a roundup it might have been just one or two sentences on each band you know so and so's in the studio or some somebody's doing this and you know i think every you know major newspaper or blog or whatever has these kind of columns with their like short i call them short takes or little you know mentions within a larger column and those are often overlooked but if you got something that a columnist can add into, you know, who's doing what in the city or upcoming events, you know, this week or something where you're sort of mentioned along with other stuff, that's cool. There are feature stories where, you know, whether it's the cover story or it's a long article about a band or something cool that they're they're doing and they're involved with, which generally involves an interview. Those are really nice because that's a really meaty uh, type of coverage that you can get. There's like the interview Q&A format where it's not an article where a writer has a lot of his own exposition there, but it's more of it's a Q&A, like, you know, five questions with so-and-so. Those are nice to get, too. And then there are lifestyle sections and other non-music coverage um it's not just in the music publications or the music section that you that you can you know if you're if you're involved with a charity or you're, you've done something there's something about you personally whether you're a, you know a, a part-time chef or maybe you're a volunteer firefighter or something you can tie in this these other things related to what you're doing musically to where you can appear in other sections and then yeah. there's the lowly calendar listing. This is my last little thing in my bullet points here. Just what, you know, the free listings where you can uh, post your upcoming gigs and what time it starts and what the cover charge is and all that stuff. So anyway, I've rambled on for a while here. So stop eating your pizza. I'll take a drink. <laughs> Go ahead and add something there. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, anyway, I've, I've had phenomenal success with um, things like the lifestyle section. And I've always managed to try. First of all, everybody needs to understand Sadly, nobody really cares that you have an album out. Not really. That's not newsworthy. You know, you know, Billy's got a record. Bob's got a record. You know, that that's just uh, what they are interested in, though, is, for instance, you know, 
Bob is working on uh, this project to bring peace and harmony into the world inspired by the events in Ferguson. He's a St. Louis native. I'm giving you some ideas here, Bob. Right. And, uh, and hypothetical, it, yeah. yeah, hypothetical, but I mean, it is national news. And if you did have uh, a vested interest in it, that tied in with something you did, even just commentary, uh, you know, because you live there, that's interesting. Uh, there's one fella in town here that is a huge, huge Elton John fan. He has, uh, a, an amazing collection of Elton John memorabilia and stuff. And when Elton John comes to town, well, they go and see him. He just happens to be a local performer here in town. And they also get a little bit of like, so, uh, you know, yeah, he inspired me and I'll be performing at blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? I've mm-hmm. done, I've done that with, uh, you know, tying into school shows, uh, cause working with kids, first day of school, different school events, then my train work, you know, and, uh, there's different train events or Thomas comes to town. I mean, and I've had a great deal of success with television. I've been on TV so freaking much. And I've never paid for it uh, because I'm always tying into some other event that's coming to town or I'm the performer or, uh, you know, we're raising money for something or whatever's going on, you know. And uh, sometimes I just talk. Sometimes they let me play some songs. It, it just varies. But, I mean, to, to be honest with you, the, 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 the possibilities for publicity – is mind boggling. I mean, I don't know why more people don't do it. I, maybe it's just uh, insecurity. Maybe, maybe too many people listen to that voice inside their head that says, you know, who are you to be in the paper? Who are you to be on TV? But uh, somebody's got to do it. And and the best advice I've ever gotten was, you know, the all of these people that are out there, whether it's newspapers or uh, magazines or television shows, they need content. They need content. If they don't have content, they, they die. They go away. And so what I always say is pray for a slow news day. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? And in a slow news day, if you got something that just might work just to fill in the gaps for them, well, you, you've now you're on TV. Now you're in the paper. Now you're in that magazine. Now you're being interviewed by that person. I mean, uh, you, you got to ask. You got to ask because if you don't ask, you won't get anything. And if you do ask, you might get something. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Oh yeah, it can't it can't hurt to uh, to throw a bunch of stuff out there. Um, but th- but there's a way to go about it. But but you're right. Yeah, there's tons of content. There's times of airtime that needs to be filled. Uh, people, you know, podcasters and radio shows, they need guests. Uh, they need music to play in the background of certain stories. Um, they need to, to write about stuff. And so yeah, you're 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 right. There's no shortage of opportunities. I think the reason um, that people don't pre- either pursue it more is because they don't know how. They think it's all like some sort of insiders club, and you know, um, you have to know somebody and all this stuff. And it is true. I mean, relationships with with anything. A lot of people, I think, like to think about they think of the media as this entity, but it's really it's a collection of people. Just like when you're dealing with venues or record labels, it's not some machine, even though it might feel like it at times. You know, it's you're dealing with the individual people there. And if you connect with them or treat them like humans, you're going to increase your your uh, odds. I don't want to go into the details of that now because like we're kind of getting close to the end of this of this one. But maybe if we want to do multiple uh, episodes on this topic, we can pick up how to approach the media. But basically, most people go about it in the wrong way. And it's 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 an innocent mistake that people make because you think that, oh, I have this new album out or I have this show that I want to promote. So when you get the person, you send an email or you leave a voicemail, you're talking about you know, you and what you need, um, as opposed to what they need. We can get more into that later, but, um, but so it's just, it's just some, it's a very self-centered approach that people take. So that one cut off kind of abruptly there. I'm not sure exactly what happened to the audio, but I hope you enjoyed that little trip down memory lane and music publicity lane. Hopefully it gave you a great overview uh, of what publicity is and your many, many options, because as I mentioned, I think a lot of them are just overlooked by independent artists. So here's your homework. What forms of publicity are you overlooking? Of that wide array of choices that we discussed, which ones have you not been paying attention to or have you not even considered? What publicity avenues could you pursue that could bear fruit in the form of free exposure? Make that list, pick something off of it, and take action. So I'd love to hear what you think about these topics. So leave a comment if there's a way to do that wherever you are consuming this, or shoot me an email even. Send your thoughts to bob at bob-baker.com. Just don't forget the hyphen or the dash between my first and last name, bob at bob-baker.com. 
And in addition to that, I want to encourage you to get on the music marketing VIP list. Speaking of email, I'll even give you a collection of music promotion ebooks and tip sheets when you do. Just go to thebuzzfactor.com, click the music marketing secrets image on the right, then enter your name and email, and boom, you're on the list. Again, that's at thebuzzfactor.com. And if you'd like to support my ongoing efforts to educate, inspire, and empower creative people around the world, please consider becoming a patron. Just go to patreon.com slash bobbaker, without the hyphen there. All these links and the stuff I talked about will be in the show notes of the podcast or in the video description on YouTube. Thanks again for listening. Please share this podcast or this video with your friends who could really use a boost of inspiration. Bye-bye, everybody. All right, have a good one. So long for now. Peace.